the time to be able to rapidly um, get innovation into their pipeline or to, or to influence their supply chain. And so we look for a smaller organization, mostly startup and SMEs or individuals who have solutions ready to be able to work with this large organization, but we understand it's a risk. So how can we de-risk that relationship building process so that the large organization doesn't say, we are not sure we want you to deploy this particular solution. So we provide funding to the large organization as a de-risking uh, fund for, for, the, um, for the small organization to be able to, large, to work with the large organization. But also it's a de-risk to the large organization so that they don't feel like we're investing in a, in a um, relationship that we don't want to materialize to, to be a commercial one. And so how is this beneficial to, to the industry, especially to this large organization? I think for the startups, because it's milestone based, obviously it's, it helps you grow within that one year. It helps you build your R&D uh, muscles within, within your company, but it also allows you to rapidly innovate with a large organization, learning from their processes and potentially getting a big client who's a large organization to work with you post that. But for industry, how, what is the benefit of this process? So, I mean, there's always supply chain challenges uh, for large organizations. And we've talked to a number of them. We, we opened earlier on in the, in the year a call for application for large organizations and large organizations reached out to us and said, you know, it's a big challenge because everything is procurement based. And so it takes a long time for that to happen. So this particular process helps in supply chain strengthening for large organization. It also allows them to have a quick and simple exposure to new technologies and innovation, as well as new markets that initially they couldn't probably have, but because these small organizations by design move rapidly, then it allows that particular process to be infused into this large organization. Of course, it's time efficient because it cuts down that whole you know, process of, of procurement and interviews. We manage that process for you, but you also de-risk the process for the large organizations. There's also optional disclosure. There are large organizations who've reached out to us. They wouldn't want us to mention their names, but there are those that we're announcing to work with today and, and, and their challenges that I think would be a big opportunity for startups, SMEs, and entrepreneurs in this country to work within Kenya with large organization, but you also have an opportunity to work with a large organization across the continent that I feel we cannot miss as entrepreneurs in this country. We've tried and tested this model across uh, different uh, countries, um, in the UK, in, in India, and we have worked with, uh, you know, within the renew renewables, um, uh, sector, in, in nuclear, in energy systems, in urban living, in defense, in, in transport uh, connectivity and, and zero carbon. We've worked in energy and, and waste challenge. We've also worked not just in private sector, but also in governments. For instance, in India, we did a challenge um, with, the, with, the mini, with their Ministry of Housing and, and Urban Affairs to understand how they could have better waste management practices, how they could tackle the air pollution issues, how they can have public spaces, especially in our post-COVID world. We've done, this has also been done with other organizations, for instance, uh, with, the, um, uh, with the UK government and, and Catapult working with F1 on a ventilator challenge, how they, they, they can produce a medical ventilators, especially uh, during, uh, earlier on uh, during COVID-19 pa pandemic, uh, when it started uh, in, in the UK. It's a tried and tested model. Uh, we've, we've seen over 895 um, applications that we've reviewed, uh, working with um, 400, more than 400 of such companies uh, pitching, but I think Florence mentioned the, the issue about funding. We've also, through this process, been able to deploy one point, uh, sorry, 17, more than 17 million pounds in funding to this uh, small organization. So it's a process that doesn't just, you know, streamline or help the large organization, it ultimately, I think, grows the innovation ecosystem. So why am I here today? We would like to announce um, that we have committed to partner with Kenya first to improve visibility and clarity 
uh, of the UK and Kenya innovation pathways. We would like to facilitate uh, jointly a community of practice among UK and Kenyan innovation support stakeholders in response to innovation challenges, challenge areas. Uh, we want to draw on each other's uh, expertise and experience to create enabling environment for accelerating innovation relevant to Kenya and the UK, especially in business and research organizations. And we are collaborating to launch um, today an open innovation with three large organizations. So it's a collaboration between Innovate UK, KTN, and Kenya to launch Open Innovation Challenge. One, with Flamingo Horticulture International, they have a challenge of false coding moth um, that they would like to control, especially in fresh uh, chilies. So this is an agri-foods challenge. Secondly, we would like to also announce that we are opening a call for applications for um, innovative approaches in recycling problematic uh, fractions of electronic waste with We Center. This is a circular economy challenge. And we have a third challenge, a Pan-African challenge. We are announcing that we would like to call applications in recycling plastic to help bring about refill and reuse revolution with Unilever across the continent. So this is a partnership between Kenya and K Innovate UK um, uh, together with these three organizations. So entrepreneurs, SMEs, uh, startups in circular economy and agri-foods that have particular solutions for these uh, challenges will be sharing more um, material ar around this. Please apply. We will provide 3.8 million uh, Kenya shillings in milestone-based funding to the small organizations that we will choose to work with these organizations. Thank you so much. She just left with an offer on the table. I think we, we, she deserves a better hand clap. Thank you, Sheila. And I'd like to welcome Michael Kamau from Huawei. Karibu. Thank you. Uh, uh, Principal Secretary, Ministry of uh, Education, Ambassador Simon Abukwesi, uh, Commonwealth uh, Secretary General, who I believe has just left, Honorable Patricia Scotland, and the CEO of Kenya National uh, Innovation Agency, uh, Dr. Tony Omwansa, and the Chairman, uh, Professor Ruben, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Yes, it is an extreme honor uh, to speak to all of you at uh, what I believe is the closing of the Kenya Innovation Week. And as was introduced, my name is Michael Kamau. I work at Huawei Kenya office. I'm responsible for the Huawei ICT Academy program. And uh, briefly, Huawei is a leading uh, global provider of uh, information, uh, information communication technology and smart devices. Uh, the company is operating in over 170 countries and regions uh, in the world. And uh, Huawei actually has over 200, 000, almost 200,000 employees. And it's good to note half of Huawei employees are working in R&D. So Huawei is one of the largest holders of patents in the world. And we have various solutions, comprehensive end-to-end -end portfolio and solutions for carriers, uh, global carriers. That includes uh, world-class solutions for 3G, 4G, and 5G infrastructure for enterprises, including data center, wireless networks, and campus switches, and also for consumers, uh, very popularly the Huawei uh, smartphones and, uh, and uh, these sort of end-user devices. So first and foremost, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you as uh, Kenya Innovation Week for uh, granting us the opportunity to be part of this, uh, or the flagship Kenya Innovation Week. The hospitality that has been granted to me and my team has uh, been extremely, extremely uh, uh, beneficial and it's highly appreciated. I would also like to congratulate the Kenya Innovation Week team for organizing what has been a successful week so far and every one of you for taking part. For us as Huawei, we are committed to bringing digital to every person, home and organization for a fully connected, intelligent world. In our quest to uh, bridge the digital divide, we believe that no one should be left behind uh, as digital technology is developing faster 
uh, than any other innovation in the, uh, in the history of man uh, mankind. As some of you maybe have seen or have had a chance to get into uh, the Huawei Digitruck that is parked right outside there, uh, we keep showing that Huawei is actually focused on achieving the vision to leave no one behind. And uh, with a majority of the population, both locally and globally, still lacking the skills to access the opportunities uh, brought about by the online world, we believe that through the Huawei Digitruck, uh, we will be able to bridge this gap. Uh, despite the challenges caused by the pandemic, and because uh, digital skills have become even more urgent during this pandemic, the Huawei Digitruck has continued to provide ICT skills and knowledge across the country. Uh, currently, as it stands, since 2019, over 2,100 youth have gone through the Digitruck parked outside there. And for those who have been there, we can see we have uh, a fully uh, a mobile classroom, a containerized uh, classroom that has all the infrastructure. We have laptops, we have smartphones, and we are able to go to the remote areas of Kenya and provide basic ICT skills to youth who are not able to access it. So it's, we believe it's good. We have 2,000 youth trained in 16 counties in, since 2019. So we hope we could continue to reach more counties, to reach more youth uh, as, as our mantra to leave no one behind continues. So I also want to underscore that uh, the Digitrack offers basic ICT skills for youth. And an excellent example was in Bomet County where we were able to provide ICT training for persons with disabilities and in, in Isiolo County where we provided 50 girls with basic ICT skills. So we believe that to be successful, we cannot do this alone. Uh, we have therefore partnered with uh, like-minded organizations such as Close the Gap, Safaricom, and GSMA, computer, and also Computer Schools for Kenya, uh, and the Ministry of ICT, uh, Innovation and Youth Affairs, under the AJIRA program to make this vision a reality. So ladies and gentlemen, also Huawei's collaboration with universities in Kenya is steadily uh, improving. As of this year, 2021, we are proud to have signed partnerships with 50 universities and colleges, including 10 national polytechnics, who have access to the latest Huawei uh, technologies and, uh, and tools that they can use uh, to access AI, to access cloud and networking uh, uh, skills. So we believe that the next uh, generation of leaders are actually being churned out of the university, and that's why we are happy to invest into providing training and certification to Kenyan students, who we believe will be the future ICT leaders, engineers, and practitioners. Uh, in November of this year, we have initiated our global innovation uh, competition, and I would like to announce and congratulate that a team of three students from Kenya, from Kenya, specifically Kenyatta University, have been selected to compete in the regional round of the Huawei uh, ICT uh, innovation competition uh, that will be in South Africa in February of 2022. Uh, the team uh, is actively developing a prototype for uh, intelligent and real-time monitoring of pneumonia in children using IoT and AI, uh, and we hope the solution could be extended to be useful in the fight against COVID-19. I'm also ex extremely pleased to announce here today that through this uh, innovation competition, you students at our university partners in Kenya now have access to Huawei AI platforms, I Huawei IoT and cloud platforms to uh, support in developing and scaling their innovations. So we hope this will harness the innovation spirit uh, among students as was evident in this uh, Kenya Innovation uh, Week and we look forward to work in with Kenya Innovation Agency and other partners to fully support these innovators with more training, tools, and support. Again, I want to uh, thank you all as I come to a conclusion, especially the Kenya Innovation Agency uh, CEO for affording Huawei this opportunity to be part of this uh, Innovation Week. And uh, I also wish to thank Ambassador Simon Nabukwesi for always being supportive of Huawei's university programs since we started. And last but not least, to all the innovators who are present here, congratulations on your achievements and so far uh, uh, getting to this uh, stage. And we, believe, we hope that uh, the efforts and the time and resources you've invested will bring you good fortune in your future and the future of this country. So uh, thank you very much. And if you'll allow me to also say Merry Christmas as we come to the end of the year. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Michael Kamau from Huawei.
the DigiTrack, which he just mentioned, holds a special place in my heart because within the circular uh, economy project that we run, which has three tracks, uh, innovation, learning, and tech, we were able to deliver a curricula for remote students in Jombu area in Mombasa, and that was facilitated through the DigiTrack. So thank you for that, I just thought to mention. Um, we have uh, the next two people um, who are going to make their commitments, and they will be doing this online. And I must mention that Kenya, Kenya uh, raised funds to enable for this to happen. So the Kenya Innovation Report and the Commercialization and Incubation Policy Support Program. So we'll start off with the Commercialization and Incubation Policy Support. And we have Alessandro Bello. I believe she's online, so I'd like her to, oh, him to kick, sorry, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, over to you, Alessandro. Good afternoon, uh, good afternoon, excellencies, uh, your distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for inviting us to this uh, successful uh, and exciting event that uh, marks a milestone uh, for innovation in the country. Um, I'm part of, uh, I'm Alessandro Bello, and I'm part of a technical assistance unit that is supporting uh, the organization of the African Caribbean Pacific states in implementing a research and innovation program. I've prepared um, a short presentation of around 400 slides. No, that's a joke. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Please uh, um, let me know if you can see it. Um, sorry. Not yet. Not yet? No. Okay, but why, while it's charging, it says that it's charging, while it's charging, I'm going to give you a bit more information about uh, um, this uh, uh, OECPS RNI program. So uh, basically, in a nutshell, um, the organization, uh, okay, maybe you can see it now. Can you see slide one? No. Yes? No, not yet. No? There you go. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, so you can see all the logos so over there. Uh, just let me uh, stress that uh, basically this uh, organization of the African Pacific States Research and Innovation Program is implemented as said by the organization of the African Caribbean Pacific States Secretariat, and it's funded by the European Union. And there is one important aim, it's to support the 79 countries member states of the organization of the African Caribbean Pacific states in unlocking their innovation potential, in announcing their national innovation RNI systems, in order to achieve a sustainable development, in order to achieve the 17 UN SDGs and also the aspiration of the African we want. And how the program does that? Well, basically through three main components. On one hand, there is an innovation fund that suppose um, universities and research centers in full circundative RNI environment. In 2019, it was launched a call for uh, proposals, and the 10 projects around the different regions of the OECPS Secretariat have been uh, awarded and they are now uh, in phase of implementation. And then there is the policy support facility, what uh, the component that, that I'm going to talk more about today, that it's uh, the component that, that we are working with policymakers in order to announce the quality and efficiencies of the RNI policies and systems in the countries. And then there is a third component uh, that it's a web portal, and it's not only a tool for disseminate the knowledge that is being produced, produced in the framework of the Innovation Fund and the Policy Support Facility, but it's really a tool, a kind of RNI hub to cross-fertilize knowledge experiences. In the framework of this RNI hub, there is also an organization of different webinars uh, and the workshops, and it really aims at the different stakeholders part of the RNI ecosystem. But let me give me you more a bit more information about this uh, policy support facility. So it has really a bottom approach. 
in the sense that country knows where the needs stands. Country knows where their needs are. So the services, the policy support facility, the PSF provides really on-demand and tailor-made services to national and regional public uh, authorities in charge for research and innovation, higher, higher education. education. So, so basically, basically, when, when would, um, we receive uh, an expression of interest, um, the OCPA Secretariat uh, through the, um, set up a, a high-level uh, team of experts at the national and international levels that provides recommendation on how to improve the design and implementation of evidence-based policies, how to develop adequate national capacities, how to foster collaboration opportunities between research and innovation institutions, academia, and the civil society. The policy report facility was launched in January uh, this year, but already has different services ongoing. In Lesotho, we are supporting towards the development of a national RNI policy. In Mauritania, towards the development of a national research innovation uh, strategy. In the Gambia, for the support of towards implement, uh, the um, uh, setting up of an innovation fund. In Timor Leste, for a database, a digital repository, and an, an STI program. And then it's upcoming Cameroon, Comesa, Mozambique, and Kenya. And let me give you more information about uh, what we are going to work on with you in, uh, in Kenya. So, first of all, you know something. So that your development uh, uh, blueprint, the Vision 2030, clearly state that science, technology, innovation are the key foundation for the realization of its objectives and goals. And what are these goals? Well, turning Kenya into an industrialized middle-income country, offering high quality of life to all citizens. You have experimented an incredible growth of innovation hubs, incubation hubs, and accelerators in the last years. And also your SDI policy recognize that innovations commercialization is a necessary step for business success of innovation. And you have said it throughout these uh, days of the Innovation Week in Kenya. And also that your universities, your research centers, your high level institutions are doing an enormous uh, research, tremendous research. But however, there is always an uh, however. You have highlighted also uh, there is no effective yet national coordination among innovation hubs, incubator hubs, accelerators. They have grown from a few to over 105 years. Also, the development management process of innovation commercialization is still weak. And approximately only 5% of universities have developed partially effective intellectual property policies to guide such innovations, commercialization activities. This is why the National Agency for Innovation, Kenyan, submitted to the OECPS Secretariat an expression of its interest requesting support towards the development of a policy implementation strategy to effectively manage the rapidly growing network of innovation hubs in the countries and a policy and implementation strategy to effectively guide and enable universities, research centers, and other institutions on the innovations, commercialization models. So what are the aims? What do we expect out of this policy support facility service? Well, of course, with a strong and well-coordinated network of innovation hubs, startups and incubators will be better served. Data could be collected regarding what is going on in innovation, what the startups are also doing, and also understanding where the best practices are, what, um, what is going on. But also, this will contribute to understand how this network of innovation hubs is contributing to the GDP. But this will, will a well coordinated network of innovation hubs. This will also pave the way for set up business incubators and accelerators programs, for set up, setting up technology transfer offices, coordination and management of innovation parks, and, and, and also the categorization and alignment of hubs to different areas of specialization. This is on one hand, so a strong and well-coordinated network of innovation hubs. On the other hand, 
The expected results are that by strengthening this innovation commercialization framework, universities, research centers will be enabled to develop innovations commercialization programs and business models, which will lead to create alternative revenues for the institutions, which will let means get new products and services to the market, which means increase Kenyans competitiveness in the global arena, which means create new jobs because of new enterprises that are developed, because it means a better return on the taxpayer and made by tax on the return on the investment made by the taxpayer. But especially this means we have a better coordinating incubation system in the country would have channel resources effectively, monitor and quantify the effect and the outputs ensure standards and create better national strategy in this regard. So these are, as you can see, the, uh, a lot of expectation out of these uh, policy support the service and how it's going to be implemented, when it's going to start. Well, the idea is to launch, uh, to launch it uh, soon. We're still discussing with the Kenya uh, some details on what we call the terms of reference. The idea is to launch very soon next year, around January, and that will be run until in six months we will uh, have already uh, the, the, the documents ready. And these will be prepared by an expert panel composed by around four high-level national international experts that they know they have the knowledge not only in the country but also international experience and then there is a national coordination team with Kenya but then especially there is the Kenya national team that it's composed by different key national stakeholders are part of the national research and innovation ecosystem. Because on one hand, the expert panel have the experience but, and the knowledge, but on the other hand, the, the stakeholders need to be involved because they have the national knowledge and they have the know-how on how the RNI ecosystem works in the countries. And then there is the PSF team composed by the OECPS secretaries and the technical assistance unit. But, Based on the experience, the only thing that we think that it works in a country, that it leads to a successful policy support service and a successful outcome is to work as one team. So we really hope that uh, uh, it's just the first of a series of, uh, of events that we're going to meet towards uh, next year, several of you that are today participating in this uh, successful uh, Kenya Innovative Week. And uh, with this, I would like to thank you again for your invitation, and um, and thanks for um, thanks for um, yeah <laughs> for organizing this uh, interesting and exciting event. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vello. And indeed, it's when I hear about policy, I see big documents, and it's nice to see someone present that support um, aspect with so much enthusiasm. Thank you very much, and do have a good afternoon if you do need to log off. And our next and final panelist for this afternoon is Dr. Jones Atella, who's going to be presenting about the Kenya Innovation Report. Karibu. Dr. Jones, Atella. Dr. Atella, do you hear us? Okay, we seem to have him on screen, but not on sound. Dr. Atella, can you hear us now? We do see you acknowledging, but we do not hear you. Tech team. Okay, as we walk around. Okay. 
There he goes. Dr. Tala, shall we test this again now? Can you hear us? Okay. I'll give it two seconds and then we'll go on to the next session. All right, please go on. Okay, I can simplify it. In the country. And as you would think about the systems, various components that make up this system, and then we are also interested in the interaction between the various components that make up the system. It is also our duty and responsibility to try and grease the various components. So what we've basically done is uh, we've thought through certain indicators uh, that we want to track over the next several years. Um, and it's a little bit of a sophisticated version because the ministry used to do this report and did, I think, 2013 and 2015, but then it, it didn't proceed after that. So Kenya has taken up that function. Uh, we thought through a certain set of indicators, um, and we're going to be collecting quite some data, and then analyze that data and generate an annual report. Now, you can think about some of the indicators, including you know, intellectual property, academic programs, uh, entrepreneurship programs, accelerators, startup, funding that come into the system, and so on and so forth. We want to believe that this is a report that will be very useful to stakeholders, uh, very, very useful. Uh, if we are not able to disseminate it uh, in the course of the year, then we will probably disseminate it during the next Innovation Week. Um, we raised funding uh, from partners, uh, and we mobilized quite some resources to enable us get moving. Uh, and um, a consultant has been engaged in a team of people quite uh, leading thoughts in, uh, thought leaders in this area. Uh, and that's part of the uh, brief that we we're going to pro provide about what we can expect over the next several months uh, until we have the final report. I think that gives a sense. Um, let's probably leave it there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I don't know why they call this the graveyard shift, yet sometimes that's when you're most inspired. But because um, we're in context, I'm going to ask you to please stand up for a few minutes just so that we can get blood flowing into our legs. And for those who are still, who are about to get a nap, I will not apologize for interrupting it. Okay, so let's shake the right leg a bit. Shake it a bit. Okay, the left leg. Your left arm. Okay, if you're left-handed, it's the, the one that you use. If you're right-handed, it's the one that you don't use. Okay, the right hand for right-handed people. Okay, and a bit of the neck. All right, shake your shoulders a bit. Okay, you're good to sit down. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you very much. And to our last session and um, to our keynote speaker, I'd like to invite Professor Ruben Omwenga Maragua, who's the chairman of Kenya, to then invite the PS. Karibu. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, let me move this. Uh, our chief guest, uh, PS, Ambassador Simon Abkwesi. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I was actually going to do the same thing, make you uh, maybe do <laughs> some shake-up. Uh, uh, I'll be quick, uh, but before I invite uh, the chief guest to give his remarks, I really want to take this opportunity to thank everyone. As you have heard, I'm the chairman of Kenya National Innovation Agency. Uh, we are the ones who started this, uh, this agency. Uh, so this, so this, this, uh, this Kenya Innovation Week was the highlight uh, of, this, uh, of this agency. So I really want to thank all of you uh, for being here and for participating uh, in, this, uh, in, this, in this inaugural event. 
I also want to thank our partners. Uh, the, we have had many, many partners that uh, assist, us, uh, assist us to get here. And also our exhibitors. Uh, I would really like to recognize one exhibitor, uh, which is uh, St. Vincent Girls Secondary School from Cliffy. Are, are you in the house? Can you stand up, please, if you are in the house? Please, before you people go, before you go, make sure you visit the, the stand of those young girls. Those are Form 2 girls, Form 2, but they have innovations in their stand. I was basically amazed what they have done in Form 2. So thank you very much. You can sit down. <laughs> then I also want to thank uh, the PS, uh, very profusely, really, and the CS. Uh, Professor Magoa, for the support uh, they have given us, and actually the entire Ministry of Education. Uh, otherwise, if it wasn't for them, obviously we are anchored in that ministry. Uh, they, we, after we were created, we had to get started. Um, uh, we started with, we were appointed to the board, myself and my board members, by Professor Kaimeni. Uh, and then uh, Dr. Matian came in, and then Ambassador Amina uh, came in, and then Professor Magoa uh, and uh, Ambassador Simon, of course, came in. In fact, it's the last maybe two since they came in that we have, we have really moved because we were able to eventually employ a substantial CEO. Uh, and that's how now we have been able to actually, I'm almost sure that if we hadn't, we wouldn't have had an event like this for sure. Uh, then I also want to take the opportunity to thank the board, the first board, the Kenya, uh, Kenya board. Uh, we, we, I, I, I'm the chairman, but I had a board. Their time expired, but I think we have two members in the house. Can you please stand up and, you know, just to thank you for the work you did. Please clap for them, uh, <laughs> Professor, Professor Mining and uh, Dr. Onsare, they were on my board, but they, their time expired in July. We really struggled, but um, uh, Professor, you can see the fruits of, uh, of, of, of struggle. Uh, then finally, the Kenya, uh, the Kenya staff, I want to really thank you. By the way, this Kenya staff, uh, when Dr. Tony Mwasa came, he was, just, uh, he was the only one. <laughs> But uh, he's a miracle worker. So he has, I think, uh, recently from 1 to 40, 40 something. Please, can you stand up, the Kenya staff? This is my only chance to you know, make you stand so you can thank you, including Tony Omuasa, the miracle worker. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. We clap for them. Uh, these people have done. I've done a wonderful job. Uh, otherwise, there's no way we could have uh, we could have we could have we could have reached here. And I say finish before I invite the, the, the chief guest. Uh, I did really want to wish everyone a happy Chamuri Day, which is coming up this weekend. Uh, Merry Christmas and then a uh, prosperous New Year, uh, 2022. Uh, so now it's my uh, distinguished pleasure to invite uh, the chief guest, uh, Ambassador. Simon Nabukwesi, who is actually our PS in the Ministry of Education. Thanks. Welcome. Members of uh, the diplomatic corps present, our development partners and sponsors of this occasion, the chair of Kenya National Innovation Agency and board members present, the vice chancellors who sponsored their teams, a good number of them are present this afternoon, the CEO, Kenya National Innovation Agency, Dr. Tony Omwanza, CEOs from other state agencies present, students from Kilifi, and I want to acknowledge you also specially, and I want to think we should do what other people do. When you identify potential in young people like this, 
they have God-given potential and capabilities, and they have the willpower, you can identify them in advance, even before they reach Form 4, and you mark them to join your university. And uh, I want to encourage Professor Kiwani, Vice-Chancellor of Dedan Kimathi University of Science and Technology, which is a true university of science and technology, to book those young people. Prof, you, you are doing very well at Data and Kumathi University of Science and Technology, and I will want to encourage them so that they come to your university. It's the first university to construct the science park. The science park is being constructed in that university. What other people have already done, we are also joining them. Another university which is constructing the science park is Chuka. Others have not yet started. So I salute you, Professor Kioni. I want to recognize Media House's representatives present, the Kenya Innovation Week Secretariat, distinguished participants and innovators, ladies and gentlemen. I bring once again greetings from my minister, Professor George Magoha. He appreciates that you supported the good idea that Professor, uh, Dr. Mwanza came up with, and you supported the secretariat, you turned up, and you have made it work. Over the last three days, we have had an opportunity to begin the movement through the Kenya Innovation Week. You have all interacted with several speakers, with exhibitors, delegates, and innovations. I therefore commend each one of you for the good work done. I commend each one of you for the goodwill, for the support you have given, and for being here throughout these three days, and for those who will extend up to Friday. We must all celebrate our achievements and the team spirit which has been exhibited that has made the first Kenya Innovation Week a success. We have all worked as a team, and I want to recognize participants who traveled from overseas. In particular, I want to recognize Professor Gerono from North Carolina University in the US. I want to recognize participants from South Africa and all who have come from different parts of this country to make it a success. You have demonstrated that once we pull together, innovation in this country can gain a strong sense of direction and it can grow. With support from all sectors of the nation, collaborating organizations and blessings from the highest office in the land, innovation will transform the lives of Kenyans and help us to achieve our big four agenda, the Kenya Vision 2030, the Africa Union Agenda 2063, and the SDGs. Through innovation, we stand a chance of creating employment, alleviating poverty, empowering the youth, and economically, developing our beloved nation, Kenya. In this country, we boast about a huge population of youthful Kenyans. But this youth bulge should be a blessing, not a challenge to our nation. To make them a blessing, they need to be given chance to identify their capacity to know their God-given capabilities and gifts and to put all to good use. This will require motivation, this will require funding, and this will require institutions where they can practice their talent, knowledge, and skills so that they upscale them and become competitive, not only in our country, but in the region and even globally. 
In the Skills and Talent Summit, we have shared ideas on how to enhance innovativeness in society through skills identification and development from early childhood through the entire education system and through the CBC to change society's mindset into one of innovation and commercialization of products and services. This will equip the learner's mind to think and operate outside the box, as they say, thereby creating ideas that will solve the challenges that confront humanity. In the Technology and the Fourth Industrial Revolution Summit, we have experienced the richness of Kenya's innovative ideas in modern technologies, such as the Internet of Things, mobile devices, 3D printing, smart sensors, big data and analytics, augmented and virtual reality as enablers of innovation. The Innovations Commercialization Summit has challenged and equipped the universities, research and technical institutes, among others, with the strategies and the policies to facilitate commercialization of innovations. I hope we don't drop these ideas, these strategies, and policies that are forming up when we leave this event. Let us put them to good use. In Startup Track, we have learned to look into the ingredients for a stronger startup movement, ranging from policy to funding to pitching. We looked into the mechanisms for improving the incubation and acceleration programs. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm well informed that during the three days, various bilateral and multilateral strategies, partnerships, as well as interactive sessions have been established for purposes of promoting innovations and an innovation system for our country. In addition, various key actors, both local and international, within the national innovation ecosystem have had dialogue and I'm sure they are now challenged and equipped to work up the strategies and mechanisms towards visibility and coordination of the national innovation system. Ladies and gentlemen, to all innovators who came to showcase their innovations, you deserve special gratitude. You are the mentors to the many potential innovators who need to be encouraged and guided to achieve what, they, what may look impossible. It's not easy, and as you are all aware, the national innovation system is at its infancy stage. But you have withstood the storms to be where you have put us today. Please let us give a clap to all startups and innovators who have made their way to the Kenya Innovation Week. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, beyond the resolutions and action points that have come from our summits, the Ministry of Education through the Kenya National Innovation Agency and partners is committed to working on the following innovation systems related aspects. Number one, to establish and operationalize a national database of accelerators innovation hubs and startups. This will help us to be better coordinated to mentor and monitor progress and provide necessary support to the national system. Number two, to develop and operationalize a framework for a national innovation fund. Three, to strengthen innovation commercialization in institutions through establishment of or strengthening of technology transfer offices 
and the supporting instruments. Four, by using technology to strengthen the linkage between researchers, innovators, and startups to funders, investors, and venture capitalists. We are also open to getting more tangible proposals from the ecosystem players on what we can do to strengthen the national innovation system. In this case, I want to encourage everyone to feel free to reach out to the CEO of the Kenya National Innovation Agency, Dr. Tony Omwanza, for more consultations so that we collaborate more. To the innovators, we hope that in these three days of interaction, you have networked with the like-minded people who will positively impact your efforts, including how you can improve your initiatives to market your products and create new partnerships. Ladies and gentlemen, as we come to the end of the Kenya Innovation Week, which is an inaugural event in our country, I'm certain that you have learned a lot, and I hope you will apply lessons learned in your respective areas of jurisdiction to create a more innovative Kenya. The end of the Innovation Week is the beginning of work that cannot be done in silos. If we are to create a visible and coordinated national innovation system, I therefore urge all players to keep the networks alive and increase the momentum to realize innovations, commercialization, identification, and development of skills and talents, promotion and facilitation of startups. I know very well that funding, learning, and innovation are things that cannot be separated. They are mutually exclusive. Innovation processes need and there is need for funding so that we have the data bank in place. I believe next year at such a time when we shall have the second innovation week in our country, a lot of people, especially in leadership position and in academia, will be attracted to the event. And perhaps the exhibitors will be more than three times what we have seen, and perhaps those who will be in attendance the way you are will be perhaps four times what we are seeing today, so that the impact becomes greater. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to take this opportunity to wish our chairman, who hanged on when the Kenya National Innovation Agency was fledgling it was on its knees for a long time. And now that it has picked up, we want to pray for God's blessings upon him. And now that he's ambitious enough and courageous enough to want to go for a seat of a governor in his county, may we all wish him blessings and pray for his success. Shall we wish him well? It's now my utmost pleasure to officially declare the Kenya Innovation Week officially closed. And I want to wish each one of you a journey masses, a very happy festive season, and a prosperous new year 2022. Asante Nisan. Thank you, uh, Honorable Pierce. And that indeed brings closure to our event, and I cannot speak after that. So I'd like to ask for a picture with the four people who are here, and Dr. Mwanza, please join the team. And as we do that, I do hope that as a movement has been started, uh, that you will take it down to your different vocations. So um, picture, please. Please do stand and we'll move away the pictures. Can I, the chairs, can I get some help?
Kenya innovators have for many years lacked the support to upscale their innovations. This is what Kenya National Innovation Agency is here for. So let me tell you about the Kenya National Innovation Agency in short form Kenya. My name is Dr. Tony Mwanza. I am the substantive CEO of that agency. So the agency was set up by an act of parliament of 2013 uh, to nurture and develop uh, the innovation system of the country. We've got a number of initiatives that we want to establish and promote in order to build the narrative of startups in Kenya. Um, one of them is going to be the Kenyan National Innovation Week. So we'll call it the Kenya Innovation Week that will happen from the 6th to the 10th of December. So let me tell you a little bit about the four tracks that we are focusing as part of the Kenya Innovation Week. They are number one, skills for innovation, two, startups Kenya, three, research and commercialization, and then four, technology and fourth, industrial revolution. So here is the plan. We want to get the entire country revolving around the Kenya Innovation Week in that particular time. You see, we celebrate days like Mashuja Day and the whole country focuses on that. And on the innovation agenda, we want the whole country to focus on innovation at that particular time. So what we want to do is to run in events and programs across the entire country, counties, innovation hubs, universities, TVETs, research centers, all have a place to play in the innovation activities of that week. Now we're going to have workshops, seminars, boot camps, hackathons, training forums, and so on and so forth. For 2021, our theme is the innovativeness of Kenyans. Now there is a reason why we want to focus on the people, because it is the movement that comes out of people that then creates the solutions. Remember, each of us is creative, each of us is innovative. It's just that our style and our intensity uh, at a personal level is different. So when we say the innovativeness of Kenyans, each of us should feel that they're part and parcel of it.